Hi, how are y'all doing? I just want to write down the attendance really quick while I have your names up there. So hang on just a second with the video. Um, Okay. Okay, we're going to wait a couple more minutes, but just to check in with everybody here, how has it been going with your Photoshop and your assignments so far? Have you been able to upload okay, access everything on Blackboard? Okay. Yes. Okay. How about you, Caroline? Because I haven't heard from you in a while. I actually just sent you an email like a few minutes ago. Okay. Um, I actually just ordered myself a MacBook because oh, okay, I haven't heard back from tech support about my loan computer. Oh. Um, yeah, well, I got the loan computer, it still wasn't working. So I just ordered myself a MacBook. <laughs> Great. You'll be happy yeah. in the long run. I, I, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's great. When's it supposed to come? Um, the next two weeks. So. Okay. I yeah. mean, they're usually faster than they say too, but you should be able to catch up with everything as long as, you know, when you have everything through, um, recorded so you can watch the different assignments and catch up. But that's right. really good news that you're going to get one. I mean, I think that they have just so many loaners and then as the semester goes on, you know, maybe the ones that, you know, aren't the best working go out. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Exactly. To hear that. Yeah. It's okay. But okay. Are you okay with the class? You feel like you're gonna be able to catch up in everything once you get your computer and you're not worried? Um, I do feel really behind, but I know what I have to do. If I have any questions, I'll just email you or whatever. Yeah, and we're not even at midterm yet, actually. So yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. All right. Um, anybody else having challenges with your computers or with the assignments or trying to access or upload things to Blackboard in any way? Um, I actually sent you an email earlier. I don't know if you saw it, but my computer um, is currently being fixed okay. because uh, if you remember, like. Mm -hmm. my camera my microphone weren't working so that's um in my hometown right now getting fixed so i'll be able to upload the um assignment by the weekend okay great so you'll have access to it again so you'll have video i remember you didn't have video last time yeah okay great so i'm glad that you're getting that fixed i mean it's definitely a challenge with you know working at home with various systems um you know we can have the technician in the lab in five minutes fixing whatever we need so this is a challenge it makes us more independent though i think but um you know it's more akin to having a home studio so it's interesting but so don't panic about those things you'll have enough time to catch up with the assignments that you miss because they really don't take you know that long to complete they just start to pile up but we have a break week anyway so you should be fine you know around thanksgiving anyway so is there anybody else with concerns about assignments or technology okay right so was everybody able to upload the current assignment or at least work in progress the assignment number four not the new one. <laughs> That's not due till next Wednesday. I mean, Thursday, but um, I can go to share screen and we can look at what's there to discuss it. I have this on. Let me just make sure that I have this um, not set up for waiting rooms because I don't want anybody to be blocked out.
Okay, so we're fine. Um, okay, I'm going to go to share screen and look at the text discussions. <laughs> okay. So let's see. I think we started at the bottom. Last time we'll start at the top. Um, okay, that sounds good. So let's look at the image. Okay, great. So Anthony, do you want to describe your process? I'm not going to read your text because I want to, you to be able to talk to people about what you chose to do with the picture. Uh, yeah, so I decided to take a picture of just a soldier. So that's like the main picture. And okay. then um, I used the cigarette. Instead, I replaced it with a flower. I just thought it was different. I like that. Um, and go ahead. And then I add it. You can really see it, but wow. in the smoke, it's a uh, what's his name? Jason, the okay. from Halloween. I added the mask and the bat, and then obviously the blindfold. It kind of like stands out the most out of everything, and just a little stuff like um, if you look to the bottom left, I added like cigarettes and dip. Every every like soldier has that. And then uh, I don't know if it's a copyright issue, but I put what the white claw symbol on his little like alcohol thing. So I don't know if that's like against the rules, but I just thought it was different. I mean, is white claw significant to the story here or? Yeah, because every soldier drinks. <laughs> is it, do they drink white claw specifically or is it no, just brand no. that you like? I just thought that was the most relevant one that everyone knows nowadays. Right. I, you know, when you add something to a new context like this, when you're telling a specific story and that's important to the story, that's usually not a copyright infringement. It, you know, if you were advertising something with this, there might be a problem. You know, if it was going to a publication that advertises other products that might be competing, that could be a problem and you might not be able to use it. You'd have to change the name more. Um, probably they would it, not want you to use their logo. It's okay in this situation, but anything that's going to publication okay. when there's a trademark on something else that usually ends up, if you add it, being an issue. Although the Playboy symbol on his shoulder probably wouldn't be an issue because that's already there, you know, in the context of your subject. So it's tricky sometimes, but, you know, for our purposes, it's fine. So it's something okay. to be aware of. And we're going to talk more about that next week. I'm going to put up some videos about copyright specifically and about, you know, the process that we do because we're always, you know, remixing and merging content from other sources, which is what you do as an illustrator or a designer. But so copyright is constantly an issue. It's something to be aware of, but no, it's no problem here. And I do like the way that it looks. So what else about the story did you add or change to try to get a particular idea or mood across? Uh, I just wanted to get like war across how like everything, time goes by so fast. That's why I kind of made like, the flower and the um, butterfly kind of like fade away. Okay. So it does go by fast. Yeah, yeah. When and it all never the time stops. what? Oh uh, war. What yeah. hasn't stopped on Earth since, you know, the beginning of time? No, true. So any comments about this? How do you feel about it? Or do you think there's anything that could be changed to increase any part of the impact of it. I really like it. I mean, I like, yeah, I'll say why I like it. <laughs> but what do you guys think? Any suggestions? Is there anything that you feel, Anthony, that you would want to change about it? Or that do you feel like it's all finished, that it's working the way that you want it to? Um, I want to make like the blindfold look like it's actually there because towards the back of the neck, you can see like um, space. But I didn't really know how to make it like as one, I guess you could say. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, the blindfold is almost there. I really like that. That's the center of attention with the red. I mean, it has a lot of implications and I just, I love the blindfold idea, but you can make that look more united and still stand out just by using the eraser a little bit more, I think is that that's on top of the photo. So you could just use the eraser on the blindfold to bring that collar area up a little bit, I think. And then just maybe in your layer, is that on an entirely separate layer, the blindfold? Yeah, yep. Okay, with that layer, you could just minimize in the layers menu, the opacity a tiny bit. Sometimes that helps just to merge something with the background layer. It just makes it look like it's more in place or it picks up the shadows or the highlights from that part of the image without picking up detail. So it looks like the, lighting situation matches. So that's sometimes a quick um, and easy way to make it look like something's merging with the layer below it. And then the other thing you can do is use the burn and dodge tool to add some shadow, I think on the left hand side, because his face is in distinct shadow, you know, compared to that very dramatic highlight, which, you know, that really pulls the composition together, that whole highlight area. So probably bring some more of that highlight into the right hand side of the scarf because then that won't break that like nice continuous diagonal of highlight. It'll just add to the composition and I think that'll help. So those three things, the eraser tool, the um, dodge and burn tool, and then the, tr the transparency opacity slider and the layers menu will help that but I really think you did a good okay. job with it wrapping around the face. I mean, the shape of it looks really believable and it looks like fabric, it looks fluid. It's hard to do that sometimes with fabric over an object. And um, the only other suggestion I might have is maybe just brighten up the flower a tiny bit. It's hard for me to tell because I have sunshine coming in here on my computer and it's kind of affecting the screen, but um, you may not need to do that. You might want to, you know, if you want that to be more of a focal point, you could just make that a little bit brighter. I mean, it's no big deal. It's just nitpicky, but I think that it looks really good. I like the Jason's face and the, the smoke because it's not real in your face. It's sort of a, you know, a supporting character in your composition, but it's really powerful when it catches your eye. Um, because you can always kind of recognize facial features, even if it's a mask, they sort of haunt you. So I was looking like there's something there. And then when I finally looked at it, I could see the mask and that just makes it so much more powerful that you have to pick up on it slowly. And it kind of reflects the bag a little bit. It looks like there's almost a face in that bag that he has over to the far right. So it makes this interesting connection. But I really like your diagonal composition there. And then with the very subtle face and the smoke, it's very, I mean, it's beautiful to look at, but it's also creepy and powerful. So is that kind of what you were going for? Yeah, yep. Yeah, any other comments? What do you think about it? Cause I can't see the chat. I'll go back to the chat in a minute, but I really, I think it's really finished. So how many pieces all together did you bring into it? And I do like the little details of the, you know, stuff that people oh. include. Uh, nine. Okay, that's great. Yeah, because it's so seamless. I mean, and your blending is so good. I really couldn't tell the only thing that stood out that flower, flower looks natural. I thought it was there that that was something that was in the original photo. So that's a really nice ad. Um, the only thing would be the scarf that I would, you know, knew right away that you had put on there. And I think that you can, you know, again, with those things probably make it more subtle but everything, it just is really beautifully blended. So do you have a good feeling, do you think, you know, for the layering process now? Yeah, definitely. It looks like it. I think that's really successful. So, okay, let me go back to the, the text discussions. Okay, so Kaylee, let me see. I don't know if she is here. No, but we can look. I think she's still working on it. Let me see what her...
text says. So let's see. If this is the latest one. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, so she's still working on this one. All right, so she last week was saying that she was frustrated with the characters maybe appearing a little bit too small. And I think that she's changed this. It's hard to tell, maybe not. Let me go back and look at the other one. Okay, and those were her parts and this is her black and white. So I don't think so, but if you weren't here this last week, she was just, it looks like she's worked on them a little bit, but she wanted the figures to maybe be a little bit bigger in terms of comparison to the waves and the umbrella. And then she was gonna add some extra texture, maybe reflecting the umbrella shapes back here and then work with the highlight and the dodge and burn tool to make these highlights more compatible and shadows with the direction of the light source to make it look like the figures, even though it's a surreal image, actually belonged in that environment. And that's always the challenge. Um, and it's just time consuming with Photoshop. The more you practice with the tools, the more, I mean, the quicker that you can do that and the more natural it becomes. But it's always a series of tools that you're using. It's rarely one that'll work to get that feeling of connection and unity with the background image across. So we'll go through those again today because we're gonna be doing another collage with a little bit different and more abstract feel to it. Okay. So let me stop the share. And so Wendy, did you want to show yours? Do you want to share your screen? Because he has two that he did for the other assignments um, to describe, but not on there. Or do any of you have the work in the um, portfolios? Let me check. Um, Okay, so let me go back to share screen. Can you see it? Oh. Okay, great. Yeah, that looks good. All right, thanks. I just found it in the thing. So do you want to, you know, talk about what your collage was all about and how you put it together? Is this me ringing or is this, <laughs> let me check just a second. I don't know if I have a window that is open that's doing that. Uh, yeah, maybe it's my photo. No, I don't think so. Whoops. Hi, I just wanted to let you know that I'm here. I came in a little late. Oh, hi, thanks. Yeah, okay, well, do, did you work on your image at all? Do you want to share a screen after Wendy finishes? Yeah, I, I sent it into the final, um, final portfolio. All right, great. Yeah, we'll go back over there in just a second. Yeah, no problem. Okay, Wendy, so... Do you want to talk about all the pieces and how you composed the image and what your concept is behind all the parts to it and how it comes together and the unity for your final concept? Yeah, um, so um, my so my thing is mostly about equality for mostly, mostly any, anyone. So um, the first thing I put was the hand on the right hand corner because like there's a okay. lot of problem around like around the United States because there's been a lot of inequality for people so I just put the hand just because any, everyone should be treated equally and then I put the chains up uh, the the chains chain for um because all of us is connected for a reason how we can end the inequality and um, I, I was I was thinking that I was trying to explain the chains if one if one chain is disconnected and you, um, each 
all of them will be discounted after that. And I put um, a image on the left side corner as a um, as paper airplane and there's one that changed direction. And that means something needs to change. And I'll, and I'll put the clock first with that with no time and just says a word, um, if not now, when is it gonna happen? So mostly that's what I was thinking. Okay, so what do you guys think about the composition and about how it conveys its message? 15 plus zero. And you can type it in chat. <laughs> I just, I wish I could see the chat, but no. Wait, maybe I can. Let me see. At the same time, if I get two screens open. Okay. All right, so did you darken up the text a little bit? We had talked about this a little bit earlier. Whoops, here we are. Okay, there, much better. Okay, yeah. Okay, so Marissa says she thinks this image and concept go hand in hand together, literally. I think it's very important that each piece has a symbolism. And yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that this is really a great example of how you can have a lot of different pieces, but there's elements in it that cause, you know, bring it to a state of unity, which makes a much more powerful message. And I think a lot of that is the strength of the composition. You know, you're really Wendy's strong diagonal, you know, the arching shape above that sort of cutting on the third of the plane. And, you know, we'll talk more about composition, but the rule of thirds where you don't split something right in the middle. He's got it, that in the upper third, sort of as a focal point with the words, the text. Is, and, you know, the text doesn't jump out at you and dominate the composition. It's kind of in a nice place. Um, also in that upper third and balanced with the rest of the composition in terms of color value. And I really like your diagonal chains. They look like they're moving. They're really dynamic. Um, and they get that point across. Yeah, I mean, they're so, you know, pulled really tightly. So you can, you know, if you're thinking about that idea that if one link breaks, the rest will fall apart, you can really feel it from the chains that you've chosen to use, you know, rather than something that was drooping or not quite so tightly pulled. And I like that element of it. And then sort of the counter diagonal with the um, hands of the clock is really nice. Just everything sort of comes together and works. And I like the Powerful symbolism. What are the airplanes again? So I remember yeah. we talked about that, but yeah. The, the air paper air airplanes means uh, chain because like uh, this all there's like different airplanes just going one lead and one change direction. I just chose that because you need you need someone to change to make okay. a change. Yeah, I think that works. I mean, because they are so directional, they're pointing yeah. arrows, but then when you look at them closely, um, you know, if this was print big, it would be beautiful. Um, but yeah, you can see that that uh, is directional, but they also feel really vulnerable and kind of, you know, fragile too, because they're paper airplanes. So I do like that symbolism a lot. Um, I like your symbolism of unity of the circle on the lower right, and that it's really subtle. It's not fighting with the clock. Um, and it's fragile too. I mean, the clock is more dominant, if not now, when, um, which, you know, suggests that, you know, it needs to happen, but that's still a fragile concept. So I like that that is not as dominant as the clock. That I mean, it just all really pulls together in terms of a text um, and a story, along with the image being extremely powerful. So, and that's really what you want for your illustrations, or your designs, or your artwork. Um, each part supports the other. Um, there's some that step back, but in their supporting roles, some that are dominant, but they all feel unified. They're not fighting and it's very pleasing to look at. So excellent job with that. Really, Thank you. Is that really necessary? Um, <laughs> that's so funny. Okay. All right, kids, so uh, Haley, <laughs> are you ready to share something or do you want me to do it? Um, it doesn't matter. I can pull it up if you want. Yeah, that would be great. Oh, it's saying that I can't. Oh. Okay, I'll go to.
whoops. Let me go to Blackboard. It's always interesting to hear conversations behind the, um, here we go, whoops. Behind the video. Okay, let's see. So it's in your portfolio, correct? Yeah, final portfolio. Okay, great. I'm towards the bottom, I think, of the page. Okay. So which one is it the, whoops. It's, um, oh, I think I put it under assignment four. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, we were just looking at that one in process. So it's nice to see this one right after. Wow, so we can really see the change. So what did you do to it to um, finalize it? So I didn't really do too much. Um, I just added like, I actually used paint tool. I did use the burner tool, but I didn't really get strong shadows with that for some reason. I tried to fiddle with it. So I actually ended up just using a really um, translucent like paintbrush and just went over it that way and right. used a smudge tool. And then um, like on the duck, I used the burner tool. Um, yeah, for some reason it worked really well for highlights, but for some reason to bring out shadows it just wasn't doing much for me okay yeah i mean it could be a few things sometimes in the options i mean did you have it set to um mid-tones or no i i changed it to shadows it just okay. wasn't pulling dark at all actually it was like pulling even lighter it was very weird yeah that is strange i mean it could be set maybe in a different mode i don't know i mean sometimes that happens it's great that you can you know okay this tool is not working for me i'm going to go use something else and it looks great did you use a separate layer for the you know painting in the shadows because that can be tricky or yeah i believe it? so i want to say i did <laughs> okay yeah i mean they, it, they look great however you got them to work i mean especially the ones under her feet that kind of you know mirror the pattern of the waves look really nice um and you know the figures look much more dimensional than in the other one just with that highlight and shadow they almost look like they're you know plastic they're so perfect um because of the highlighting which really works with that situation they look like they might be wet from the water and they definitely blend in so much better mm -hmm. um so what else did you do to it um i mean i added the the, the rubber duck at the bottom <laughs> i'm not sure how i feel about it i mean i feel like i could have blended it in a bit more but i like having that darker orange down here to like kind of bring that middle line to the bottom because I felt that was really empty. Um, but right. I also added in more umbrellas and like I was trying to make like some smaller ones so it looked like it was in the back more but um, I feel like maybe I should change up the shadows on that because it looks like they're all in the same plane. Yeah or you could make maybe the some of them more semi-transparent so they're picking up some of the background. Um, okay. Yeah, I agree that they you might want to do that so they're a little bit lighter. Okay. So what does the duck symbolize? What are all the different elements of it <clears throat> telling for your story? I love the duck, uh, though, I have to say. Yeah, that was kind of a funny last minute thing. But I wanted it to be like kind of like I, I think I mentioned that some of this is based on dreams that I've actually had. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted like I wanted it to have um, like kind of a childish feel, but still have that limited palette. Um, I don't know. I just kind of went with the dream concept and just kind of went with it. Yeah, I think it really works for the dream concept. Um, it's it's funny, but it's creepy. <laughs> so I kind of like yeah. that. I think kids like that sort of you know it's like a fairy tale almost um or i'm trying to think of the illustrator that did that kind of work james and the giant peach that series of books yeah that's what the duck kind of feels like to me i mean it's a <laughs> funny sort of childlike character but in a way it's kind of threatening and i'm um, a little bit ominous so i like that about it i mean the whole scene is if that was you know a dream it looked like 
it would be one that you know could go either way into nightmare or dream territory i love the truth yeah. coming out of their heads so that's new too wasn't it did you, you didn't have the trees for the next before no, I actually ended up losing that file. So it was like, I didn't really like the plants that I used anyway. So I, I went with this like bonsai tree, which is funny because I actually just got a bonsai tree for my birthday. It's literally <laughs> sitting right next to me. It oh. looks great. Did, so, so did you photograph it for the... I found just a stock image. Okay. But, yeah. No, I mean, it really, it looks like neck, like, you know, muscles or something being pulled up into the tree. So it works kind of perfectly, the bonsai shape for that. Yeah, I thought that worked really well. I liked the wider <laughs> root. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, it's so believable. I mean, it's obviously a fantasy, but it's so believable. It looks seamless now with the way that the shadows and the highlights are and the way that that sort of unites the tree. Um, yeah, I do feel like maybe the one umbrella could be black and the other ones, you know, if you made them semi-transparent, that would pull some of the warmer color through it. And, you know, that automatically makes them look like they're going into the background mm -hmm. and then would leave that one umbrella sort of on the diagonal with the people. Because, I mean, I like the way they look, but it kind of feels like a separate pattern almost that sort of divides yeah. the picture. Yeah, because I feel like even though the duck is like kind of weirdly sharp, it's definitely like in the foreground and there in the midground, you can still kind of see that there's like a space between them. Yeah, yeah, I, I like, think that's what, yeah, I was feeling. I think, that. Yeah, I feel like the umbrellas are kind of, I mean, I threw those in very last minute too, so that's probably why. <laughs> but yeah, I'll definitely try making them more transparent and seeing if that helps blend it a bit more. Yeah, I like them as an element. I mean, just as another dream surreal element. But yeah, that might help. I mean, also maybe extending a, a highlight or a, you know, a shine on the water down from this yellow um, sun, you know, to sort of pull the eye down and connect it with the big duck and the people might help split up this plane in here. It's like mm -hmm. this plane where, yeah, it's gray and it's kind of a neutral purple gray. And that's a really nice combination with the orange palette for your palette of opposites. But there's something in here that's like real inactive. So your eye goes there first. It's strange how yeah. conditions work that way. So maybe just something to break up that one plane so it's um, not so dominant. It seems okay. like it shouldn't be dominant, but it kind of is the way that it's set up. I think maybe the Yeah, way now that it's pointed out, it's kind of like, especially because the umbrella and the head of the duck, it's just kind of like framing this empty block. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's it, a frame. You're probably yeah. I I do think actually that's probably what's causing that that look. Because it's a, it's a distinct rectangle. So yeah. Breaking okay. that up a little bit. But otherwise, I mean I think these look fantastic. I mean it's just it's really good. <laughs> and over here. Thank you. Um, they look like they belong there. They look weightless but heavy at the same time, that they could really be sitting on water now. So and that they're even part of the water, they look more fluid and wetter. So yeah, I think that's coming out really great. Thank you. Um, any comments? I can't see the chats. I'm going to stop sharing so I can. Yeah, I, I read Marissa's. Ooh. Okay, so Marissa says she loves the umbrella concept, especially considering that water is usually above umbrellas. Yeah, I like that too for the surrealism not below, and I think this works well. And the way that you did the people sitting on the wave is very well done. Yes, definitely. Um, I think about the, like the water, like how she made it like with the shadow, like the, like with the shadow, how it pops out, like the actual sitting in the water and made it like, like it's like actual someone sitting in the water. It does look like that, yeah. Like they're weightless almost, but they could be sitting there. I mean, also, yeah, before I stopped sharing, I was going to say that that too, I mean, that shadow along with the lighter figures kind of creates your focal point. You look there first because there's your darkest shadow and then your brightest bright on the opposite side of the highlights on the figures. So, and that's probably what you wanted to call attention to most in the composition. Yeah, yeah because that works great. So those elements, yeah, I agree. I think that was a nice job with that shadow. It was a really good choice. Any other comments? 
these are so fun to look at. <laughs> I can't wait till we get more of them up. I know everybody's sort of, you know, getting up to speed, but eventually after the midterm, we'll be able to look at more of the dream images and we'll just keep going throughout the semester back to the different assignments as they come up. I mean, don't feel, you know, if you're finishing. Um, whoops. <laughs> if you're finishing one late that, um, you can't show it and have discussion about it because whenever you load them up, we'll look at them. It's always helpful uh, in your repertoire of techniques and also just to see the different ideas. So is there anybody else? Do you have something in progress that you want to show? We can share the screen. Um, I have something. Which is, let's see. Okay. Oh. So this is. Well, this we should be able to use right. addition or subtraction. Right? Do you guys? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. like that. Yeah, that's beautiful. So is this yeah. your photo? You yeah, this is one of my photos. Um, okay. technical. Huh? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was wondering. Someone said something. I was just like wondering which. <laughs> um. So I actually changed the colors. And like mix of like like adjust the colors and just find like a blend that comes out, but actually make the um, the lining even pops up even more. Oh, just I have no idea what to put inside like around the picture. I just, I just need some ideas to see what can I can add. To. I was gonna say it almost reminds me of like. <laughs> in like anime when there's like a romantic scene they have those like lens flares and it's like very like pinky purpley it, it almost reminds me of that like I feel like this would be like a background in a scene like that that could definitely work for that kind of scene the colors look like that I agree yeah and kind of the romanticized I do like the lens flares a lot I mean that kind of contrast yeah, it's very dreamy yeah it does feel dreamlike. And so this is for assignment five, right? The, yes. For the environment. Okay, so we'll look at some different ideas because you're going to shoot some background images. Yeah, and, that's and, um, yeah. Um, and then maybe the silhouette image could, you know, this could work into that. That, that's what we'll, I'll demonstrate today that might give you some ideas for it. Okay. I mean, this is also so, you know, it's beautiful and it's kind of got a dominant pattern. It could be, you know, the more dominant element in the image. So we'll look at merging though, the ones that you want is background images, environmental images with some silhouette images that give it structure. So that might be something, this one might be something that you work into some of your silhouette images for a more graphic effect. Okay. Yeah, it looks great. So Thank did you, you take this? What did you take it with? Uh, my my phone. Actually, my phone. I had like, I had like a lot. I had a lot of different ones. Um, I just start. I just started with this one, especially because I thought I liked it the most. So. Yeah, really. Did you use um any special effects filters, or is this a direct photo? Yes. No, I use special effect. I went to my. Uh, I went to. I think. Hold up. Adjust, I went to adjust and I went to color balance. Okay. And I just changed it, like, see, I just changed it and see how it came out. With, I did like, a, yeah, I have okay, three different so, of these. Yeah, so maybe you pulled out the green and then that would pull in magenta, that might have been that yeah. one. And yeah, that's, that's a nice filter when you have that up there. I mean, you can, you know, tweak photos just a little bit to change a skin tone or something or to change a shadow, but you can also use it in a more extreme way that you've done here to create a special effect look to something. And just like you can with the, um, the dodge and burn tool, you can affect the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you can get a lot of complexity in an image when you change up the color with that. That looks great. I really like that glowing Thank you. blue. And it's almost a silhouette, but not quite. So you can still see the detail, it's great. Yeah, so for the next assignment, you're gonna collect some images and we'll go over it in Blackboard and then I'll do the demonstration and that might help you with some ideas. So um, yeah, it is like a reflection on water, I agree. It does it definitely has that feeling to it. And you could create 
you could turn it into a reflection on water just with some highlights on top of it on another layer if you wanted to do that um, and use it for water. That's a good observation. What are we making for our coffee? Thank you. Um, I haven't sent it to you okay, yet. Hold on see. one second. So anybody else, do you have some photos that you want to share or anything before we go back to Blackboard? Okay, so I'm going to go back to share screen and we'll just look at the assignment in writing and then we'll go into the, the demonstration. Okay, so I just posted this today or yesterday actually, um, current assignment. Um, and I put your other assignment into past assignments before we start going through this one. So they're all listed there. If you feel like you're behind and you need to go back through the assignments, they're all here um, with their due date and past assignments. And just remember that the due dates for things are your due in progress so we can discuss them. You don't have to have all the finished work in your final portfolio in its final, final form until the end of the semester so you can still have time to revise it. So that way, if you're catching up with a computer that's giving you problems or trying to get, you know, another computer that works better, because of that, you will have time to catch up. You can keep revising the new assignments. You can go back to the old assignments. They're not due in final form until the end of the semester. So I'm going to turn in midterm grades just for class participation and showing work in progress next week because it is midterm. I usually grade every single assignment because we're in class, the classroom and you know we can control that more. But in this situation, I think just a, com a combined grade just so you can get a feeling for where you're at. And then um, at the end of the semester with the final portfolios, you'll get a grade for the portfolio. And let me know if you have any more questions about that. It's more confusing kind of having not set dates where the final is due, but then that gives you more time for revision. It's closer to what you would be doing in a work situation. So I think it kind of, you know, it works better in a lot of ways. So, okay, assignment five. Um, this one's more focused on your own digital photography. You can use some images that you find on the internet as supplemental images or to add supporting content to the image, but you really want the majority, the bulk of the image, at least 70% of it to be your own photo work. And that keeps you from running into copyright problems. So, it's always good to work as much as possible with original images. So these are just some techniques that we'll learn for taking an image. It may even be a funky image, but if you set up the lighting properly and deliberately, you can get images that you can work with to create a structured graphic design, a photographic, um, sort of a digital photographic design that's abstract yet has a solid structure in terms of design. So the concept for this one is mood and environment. Just to think about those two things, how do you convey that to a viewer? What design elements do you use to convey different moods and your feelings about different environments? Um, you know, we talked about limited palettes. That can be something using a monochromatic palette, um, a bright palette versus a subdued palette, textures along with the content all of that reinforces the mood and the environment that you're trying to convey to the viewer. And then also thinking about what those things actually are, you know, what environment is, what mood is, can help you come up with some concepts for your illustrations. In this case, for this assignment, you're going to do two with distinctly different moods and environments that you're depicting, but you can use elements of each of the compositions in the other one. So in the demonstration, I'm just going to flip one composition over and then reuse it um, by adding new images to the original photographs. And so it doesn't have to be two distinctly different images that are going to take a long time to compose. You can keep working off a different one by just changing the layers. So um, the outcomes to 
learn how to be very deliberate about conveying a mood or a, an emotion in a portrait. In this case, you're going to be doing a portrait as the main structural element. Um, it doesn't have to be yourself. It can be somebody you know, or it can be a selfie or, um, you know, even a part of your body. It doesn't have to be or something you own. It doesn't even have to be your face. But you want to think about how you can create a portrait in an environment um, by using this collage process. And let's see. Um, okay, so predetermine what kind of atmosphere, what kind of content that you want to project, and then you can be deliberate about seeking out photos that you want to use. You can use ones that you've already taken, or you can go out and do some shooting for this. Um, it's a good way to get outdoors and this weather <laughs> and away from the computer for a while on the camera. Um, but either way, or you can use a combination of both. And we're going to be working with silhouettes because it's just an easy way if you set up your photo situation very deliberately to get some of them as silhouetted images. They're just easier to drop out with selection tools and create. We're going to be working with layer masks this, with this assignment. So the contrast is the thing that gives you the simplified palette that you can more easily select. So you can set up a high contrast situation very easily. And I did post an article in the readings. It's the one on top about setting up a silhouette shooting situation. But anytime you're in front of a bright window, even in this room I'm sitting in, if I put my hand in front of the window and shoot it with the window behind it, with all the other lights off in the room, I'm going to get a nice silhouette of my hand, which is what I did for the example. Um, the example the example that I'm going to show. So think about getting some background images. Wendy's trees would be great for background images, that kind of pattern textured image. And then getting some silhouetted images that you can um, drop out certain sections of to create a mask and to create a structure around that more textured overall patterny image. And that will make a nice abstract sort of surreal, but more graphic design looking composition. Um, let's see. And I did put some examples up here. Let's see if I can get to those. Whoops. Okay, so here's just a simple idea. I mean, this is just a really stark silhouette with probably the figure dark on a white background and then just using the selection tool to select maybe the magic wand tool or the area selection tool the image and then dropping it out and then we're going to use the paste into tool in photoshop that creates a mask masks sound really complex and tricky in photoshop and in earlier versions of photoshop they were <laughs> um, but they've kind of discontinued that um, they were called clipping masks and people still use them, but they've simplified the whole process. So masks are just an area you drop out from one image and drop in another one. And that's what we're, what we're gonna be doing for this effect, where there's the content of the outside structure and then the content that you drop into it and they have du dual meanings. Whoops. Okay, so I'm going to do the demonstration and yeah, there's a whole bunch of those on there that you can look at. Um, so do you have any questions about this before we start it? Okay, so I'll go into share screen. I, again, I can't see sh chat once I'm there, but feel free to, you know, you can use the raise hand tool if you want me to stop for a minute or explain anything or just, you know, shout it out. Um, it's fine with me. <laughs> so I'm going to go to share screen and then grab the um, Photoshop image. Whoops. Oh, let me close this one first.
There we go. Okay. So these are just two compositions pieced together from the same image. So the first one, and I was trying to get two different moods. I took a silhouette in front of the window. It was really simple and I can show you the original. Um, and then the second one, I just flipped the whole composition, the entire layer stack over, which I'll do again during the demonstration to create this one. So all those original elements were there that are in this one. Um, the face, which was a silhouette, the hands were all silhouettes just duplicated. And then the background was just a um, photo that I dropped in from Pexels and the foreground, I took the floral one and dropped it into the masked area. So here is the opposite one. I flipped it when I was finished with that one. I just told it to flip the whole canvas over uh, horizontally. And then that brought all those same elements there but I did have the different elements in mask form. So I was able to just drop in new content inside the masks. So it was a much quicker process than building it from scratch again. So we'll go through how to do that. So the first one, if you kind of look at the layers over here, you can see there's all these parts that have a dark, Sec a black and white second part to the layer. And that's where I added a mask to the layer, which is really just a complicated way, again, of saying that I selected the darkest area with the select area tool. And then I went and got another image and copied it into the temporary memory of the computer, and then used the paste into command to drop it in to the selected area. So this original um, silhouette was pretty funky when I took it. So I'll just open that. Whoops. Okay, here it is as a separate image. <laughs> and I'm just gonna rotate this. It came up in my camera this way. Whoops, and I'm gonna unlock this right now. I mean, because I just called it up directly and didn't place it. It's got a locked background. If you ever have this happen, you'll see this little lock symbol in the layer next to the word background. I'm just gonna click on that to unlock it. And now I can go to edit, transform and rotate this, or I can rotate at this point since this is the only thing in the image, the entire canvas. So I'm going to image rotation and rotate counter, or actually it would be clockwise there. Okay, so um, those are your two choices when you want to just affect something that's in one layer in terms of positioning or rotation, you use transform and there's all your rotate and move and scale tools. If you want to do the entire composition, that means all the layers in the layer stack. Um, I would go to image rotation and do that there. So now I have a vertical image because it rotated the whole canvas. But anyway, all this area that's black, this is just me sitting in a darkened room, no lights on, sitting in front of the window right here on a bright day and then trying to take a selfie. And I thought, you know, I can't do anything with this thing, but you know, it did work out because I had a really distinct shape. So using a side, if you're doing yourself or a portrait of somebody else, having them to the side is probably gonna work out better so you can see some features. Um, but once I had that, it's so easy just to go up to the select area tool, select object selection tool. And I'm in lasso mode for this up in the, ob the whoops. Here. Okay. So I just went like that to see what it would select and it picks out much a lot of the area. I can clean it up later. I don't really want my hair and everything else in there, but I want to get rid of the background. So I just went to select inverse 
and then hit delete to drop all the rest of it out so I could work with it. Okay, and at this point, now that I can kind of see what the outlines are there, that is driving me nuts. <laughs> um, Okay, so I'm just going to go now for the eraser and clean this up. I don't really want any of this background in my silhouette. So I'm putting this at 100%, kind of a soft edged eraser, not entirely mushy eraser, but kind of in the middle. So I'm not seeing pixels as I go around the areas. You can always give yourself a facelift with this. Um, there you go. <laughs> and just picking out the parts that I want. I wanted kind of like one of those classic portraits that were done old fashioned silhouettes that were the side view of somebody and they were just made out of black cut paper and then framed um, usually with some object that the person owned. I was kind of going for that look. So I'm just getting rid of the other little clumpy parts to get a more graphic look to it. So that's not bad. I mean, that was just an easy, quick photo to take a picture of, easy to drop out the surrounding content with the object selection tool, or I could have used the magic wand tool probably in this case, but I wanted to make sure that I picked up the hair that's a little bit lighter up there and brought it all over with the silhouette. So now I'm going to just grab the whole thing. I'm just going to select all and copy it. So when you do select all, it's putting a selection around the entire page there, the transparency and the silhouette. Um, then I'm, well, actually I could just take the silhouette for that matter um, by just going back and reselecting it as an area. No, it doesn't want to do that. Let me see if it'll let me select and do that. Okay. And I don't want that ragged kind of bottom area, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay. And it's grabbing it. I'll get rid of it later. I'm just going to go to edit, copy. And this just saves a copy of whatever is within the selection area into the temporary memory on the computer. And then I'm going back into my composition and I'll turn off this one. And I had one below it too. I kind of get so many layers, I get things sort of, yeah. And then things that I've tried and I don't like and all sorts of stuff stacked up in the layer. But anyway, so I wanted to just now go to edit and paste that into the whole layer stack and deselect. Go back to the move tool and then just sort of generally position it where I want it. When you're first starting, you probably won't have the other background elements there. So um, you can add them as you go or sometimes I'll just add a background that's um, a gradient or a solid color background so I have something to look at besides the white. So if I turn all the other elements off, okay, you can see it's just the silhouette now on I added a gradient fill background right above the white layer. And you can just do that and you can stack these. You can add as many as you want and make some semi-transparent to get some interesting color blends. But underneath on your layers menu, there's these tiny symbols. The one that looks kind of like a circle cut in half or a cookie. <laughs> um, if you just click on that, you've got all sorts of blend layer options. So I'm gonna add a new layer in this case, 
And these are all adjustment layers that will make a layer out of any of your adjustment tools you have up here in your adjustments menu in the pull down menu. The ones in the pull down menu just apply that adjustment to the layer directly. But the ones down here give you a floating layer with your adjustments where it applies to only the layers that are below the floating layer. And we'll look at that later on, but you can be more particular with your adjustment tools with that. But right now I just want a gradient layer behind my silhouette. So I'm going to the cookie shape, going to gradient, and then Photoshop has all sorts of different color sets of gradients. So I'm gonna go for the purples here. And you can even create your own gradient between your foreground and your background color. That's what comes up in your first basic gradient set. Okay, I like that one. And there's different styles for them. This is linear gradient, just a bleed of color from the top to the bottom. There's radial that will give you a radiating out from the center point, which I kind of like with this gradient. Um, you can change the angle with the in linear and put it on a diagonal or any other angle. And then there's shaped gradients that are more graphic. But I'm going to go back for that radial one. And you can change the scale of it. That just is the amount of blend between the two different colors, which one's dominant. And say, OK. OK, so now I have this fill behind the silhouetted face. So I'm going to go back up to the silhouette and now turn it into a mask. So I'm just going to go up. Whoops, that's not the one. There it is, the one that has the eyeball icon that's active. All these are now deactivated layers, but I can bring them back if I want to. But I'm going to go up to this one and then just use the area object select, or I could use the magic wand tool because it's pretty much all the same value. So that very easily just selects around the outside boundaries of this selection. So I'm just gonna leave it selected. And this time, instead of placing something embedded to try to put that into the selection, which won't work, it's just gonna give me a separate layer. And I'm gonna have to go select it again. This computer has like touch sensitivity that I can't find in the um, preferences to get rid of instead of a click. If you leave your finger too long in one spot, it'll just do what's <laughs> underneath your finger. So. I have to get used to that. But anyway, I'm going up to File and Open instead of Place Embedded this time because I just want a separate image open in my tabs. And I'm going to find a texture or something that I want to place into this face. So um, let's see what this is. I don't. Oh, no, let's see. I just pulled a bunch of stuff off the internet. Let's try this one. Okay. So this was just an image from Pexels now, um, but you could shoot something like this. It's got that nice texture equality. That's a nice kind of image to paste into something. Um, that image of leaves that Wendy showed would work great for this. I'm gonna select an area of it. You don't have to select the whole thing and then go to copy to save it into the temporary memory. And then I'm going back to my portrait. The face, the silhouette area is still selected. So now I'm gonna go up to edit and paste special instead of just paste and go to paste into because paste into pastes into a selected area, anything that you have saved in the temporary memory and creates a mask at the same time. So this is now made a second layer. My source silhouette is still underneath it, but now I have another layer on top of that that has transformed the selection into a mask because it's, you can see white on black, the white is a selected area. And then next to that in the icons is the content that I just pasted into that selection. 
So it's sort of just sitting in the middle with a lot of the shadow off to the top and the bottom, which doesn't look good. So I want to change the size of that. And what's nice about this is that now that this is a mask, Photoshop is remembering that that was a selection. So if I keep clicked on the left hand part of this selected layer, which is my color content, this black and white image that I just dropped in, not the mask. If I go up to edit, transform, and scale, whoops. Now I can scale this, and if I hold the shift key down again to break the proportions, I can kind of work it into the image and it's stopping at the boundaries of where the mask on that layer is telling it the selection was, it's telling it to stop. So I can kind of arrange that within that masked area. And then when I hit return, it's gonna apply that to the mask selection. And that way I can start building up layers of textured image within the, um, the different masked areas that I have. And with this mask, you can do, you know, as long as you click on the part of the selected layer that's got the color content. If I go back to modes, I can try the different blend modes. I don't have a lot there yet, except for that color background, but that will, you know, change the color relationship between the, that layer and the ones below it. So you can get some interesting effects and some interesting blends. I kind of like that. Um, Yeah, and then keep adding to it. So let's see, I have, um, I'm gonna go back and I think I'll place embedded on top of this. Just another quick photo that I took in front of the window just to get a hand image for the demonstration. So that's got a lot of information behind it. It's not, a, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time cleaning it up or posing it. You can, the better your original photo shoot, the less work you have to do later in Photoshop. But I'm just gonna enlarge this and then I'll clean it up by hand. There's still enough information and difference between the hand and the background to get a good stencil or a good silhouette. So now I'm going to go back to our wonderful, I love this tool, object selection tool, lasso in objects. And then just put a lasso around uh, as close as I can to the hand area. Come on. I'm using the trackpad again. I really need to get a tablet. Um, and it's kind of, eh, this one's not working as well as it could. I may, let's see, try the magic wand tool instead, since this is pretty dark. So I'm going to just click on the dark areas. And that works a little bit better. If I hold down the shift key, whoops, I can add to my selection. And then it's popping out here eventually, but that's okay. I'm gonna get rid of that later. I'm gonna add a little bit more because there's a highlight on the finger and I don't want that to drop out. So it looks like it's really skinny. All right. And I think that's enough. I'll clean it up by hand with the eraser. Ah, oh, shoot. Shift. And you have to be really careful about where you place the magic wand tool. If it goes off that little top of it that looks like a star into another area, it's gonna select that. So now I'm just gonna go back to select inverse to select the background instead of the hand and then hit delete to drop that out. And of course, I forget to take off the, I have to rasterize this because I placed it embedded so that it turns it into a smart object. Now I can hit delete. Okay, so there's the silhouetted hand. And I'm just going to move it 
so I can see better what's still inside it that I want to erase. I kind of want it coming off this way. So I want to get rid of these angular shapes. So I'm going to deselect it and I think I'll just get the eraser tool or a big one and get rid of those quickly. And I'm going to leave this on 100% because I just want it to, I don't care about being detailed about cleaning it up. There we are. Until I get closer to that wrist. Oops, there's more of it down there. Okay, so I'm being kind of careful about how I go along the edges because I'm going to turn this into another silhouette um, layer mask and it's going to pick up any kind of edge anomaly that I have. Okay, so that's not too bad. All right, so now I'm going to try to, I'm going to go back to the object selection tool because I erased everything around it. It should be able to pick up the object without being picking up. Yeah, it did. It picked up the highlights. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and go back to open. And I think this is the most confusing part about doing this is that you can't place embedded you know, the object that you want to put into this selected area because it's just going to come up as a separate layer, um, which is fine because then you could just copy and paste from that. But I'm going to just open. It's just easier to open. I don't want it in the layer stack in a separate tab and then copy from there. So let's see what we got. I think I'm going to have to go to a different folder. No, maybe not. Well, let's see. <laughs> Okay, I'll try this. Or maybe this one, it's more of an overall pattern. Okay, so it's opening these flowers in a separate tab and they're kind of dark. So I'm gonna go up to adjustments first and go to levels and just brighten up the middle of that gray scale so I can see more texture and detail. And then just go to the lasso tool and pick up the flower area. I'm just avoiding the dark areas around it. And then going, taking this selection and going up to edit and copy. And now I'm gonna switch back to the tab that has my image in it. And the hand is still selected. So I'm gonna go to edit and paste special and paste into and that will drop that flower image into the hand. And because that was a direct image from my digital camera, it's much higher resolution than the one that I used to start this image with. I mean, this whole workspace is smaller than what that would be, so I'm getting a much bigger image. But what's nice again about this being now in a masked layer, the hand is now a mask in this layer. You can see that black and white symbol for the hand there, and here's the color data. So now I'm just going to go up to edit, transform, and scale. And I can just scale down the flower within the hand until I kind of get it to look the way I want to. If I hold the shift key down, I can change the proportions. And I'm probably going to have to zoom back out to be able to see enough because it was so much bigger to shrink it back down.
Okay, so I kind of like it positioned like this. But you can see with the dark silhouette behind it, and then the dark edges where there was shadows in the flower for this part, it blends in with the background. And I really wanted that hand to stand out as a shape. So the other tool you're going to use a lot in conjunction with this would be the layer styles again. And the one that works great with this technique is the um, outer glow. So I'm going to layer style, outer glow. And I had already chosen kind of a light color here, but I'm going to pick up another one that's different from this orange color that's from the flower petal in the corner and just go for kind of a pink color that blends with the background. Okay. And I'm probably going to need to move this a little bit. I can see to separate this, but what I wanted was this kind of to separate the handout. It's just putting a glow around the selection and placing it into the transparent area within that layer. So I can make it more or less opaque with all these selections here in the layer styles. If I just want a very subtle glow, it still just offsets it a little bit. So I can see that this is a separate object on top and defines the edges. If I use the spread, it's going to give me a big sort of graphic edge, which I did use in one of the other images. But that's kind of what I'm not going for here. I want it to be more subtle. I just want that glowing look. And then there's all sorts of textures you can add with this. They're fun to go through to get kind of ripple textures. And these can really work in situations where you're trying to place ripples on top of a water image or something um, to make another fluid look or another kind of texture. But I just want this simple gradient. So I'm going to this contour as a diagonal, the simple diagonal, and then saying, okay, here, and now I can always go back as long as this is color content with a mask on it. I can go back up to the move tool and then move that back around so I can fill in that little area that was blending with that background and bothering me that way. And until you remove that layer mask, that's always there to shift, move. I can go back up to transform and scale. and then change it continuously. That was, was kind of weird, but I like it. Okay. Um, so that's some other things you can do with your combinations of your silhouettes and then your texture images. At this point, I want something to kind of unite that background. So I'm gonna go back down to the bottom of the layer stack and turn those clocks back on, or mm, I don't really like that one for this. Let's see, um, here we go, the old fashioned clocks maybe kind of adds a feeling of unity to it, just an overall texture. But here, now there's a little anomaly with like that droplet sitting right where the nose is, which looks weird. So instead of cleaning that back up by hand, I'm gonna go back up to where that layer had its mask, the face silhouette, and then click on the color content for that, which is the person in the rain, and see if moving that around, yeah, that takes it out of there because it's just one of the drops that was in that image that was causing that white spot to land right there. So you can always shift it when it, you need to for your composition, as long as it's still a separate mask within that layer. And then I'm just gonna go back up to edit, transform, and scale and drag this back down. Okay, that looks better. Um, okay, so there's those other elements. So if I want another hand in there now, I'll just do one more. I kind of like the way this looks, but just to show, um, I'm, you can always duplicate the entire layer. So I'm going to click on the layer with the hand and the floral. It's all one unit and then go back up to duplicate layer. And then I can put another one on top of the other layer. It's a separate layer now. And then click 
and move it. Although in this case, I'm going to need to unite the two layers to get this to separate. I mean, the two sections of the layer. So you've got the color data and I'll zoom in. Whoop, I can't on the layers but you've got the color data and then you've got the mask data. If you click between the two of them, you get this little lock symbol and you should be able to drag the whole object together now. If I don't do that, it's just gonna keep trying to pull around the color data with on top of that hand. So that's really important if you wanna move the mask with the fill color or pattern together, you have to click in the middle of them to get that lock symbol, that lock tool. So now I can go up while it's still locked and go to transform and flip horizontal, just to flip the hands in the other direction. And then, um, maybe try some of the other blend modes so it doesn't look like just a repetition of the hand above it. I wanna still reflect the color, but I want some of the guy in the background that's in the rain to show through. So I kind of like that darken. I'll look at some of the others to see if that might work better, but I think that one's probably the one I like. That's not bad. I want so the continuity of the hands going through. I wanna see some of it. I don't wanna just, get rid of it all together, but I do want it to blend. Okay, and because this is kind of a darker palette, a darker content feeling, I'll go with darker color because that does impact the mood. Um, any of the palette changes, the purples, the kind of dark um, downward texture here, the darker color here. So at this point, I would probably go ahead and save it. I would, I mean, if I was doing this as a finished image, I'd do more to it, but for now, I'm just gonna save this as the first one. So I'm going to save as, and I'm gonna save this as a layered Photoshop document. And call this one portrait three, cause I have the other two. Um, just to separate the name, keep the layers intact is a working file and then save it. So now to create the second one, I just wanna take everything that's in here. I don't want to like start from scratch with a brand having to go back and select the silhouette again and do all of that cleanup. I just wanna work with what's here and change it for my second one in this set of images, which is what you're gonna do. And you can add new information to it. That's um, you know part of the assignment. You can bring in new images. But if you want to have some of this as a foundation for your second image, I'm just going to take it now and go to image, menu, image rotation, because this is not like the transform menu where you're just going to flip something or change the positioning of it in one layer. I want the whole layer stack, the entire Photoshop document to flip to the opposite side. So I have to go to image, image rotation, and flip canvas horizontal. And it's gonna look at all those layers and then flip them to the opposite side. As soon as I do that, just so I don't make a mistake, I'm going to go to save as. And I've made this mistake many times, not doing this right away, <laughs> and save this as portrait four. So it's now a separate file from the previous one that I just did because this is its counterpart and I don't want to mistakenly save back over the top of it after I've made changes to it and then have to start again with the first image. So um, change the name and save it right away. And then you won't have to worry about that. So now at this point, I can start changing up some of the images within this to give it a different mood and different content. So I'm gonna go back to this layer with the face in it and just go back up to the object selection tool. And I could try going to the channels menu 
the channels menu shows you what your masks are in a currently selected layer. So there's two different ways to select. I could use channels and then click over this little tool at the bottom of the channels menu. And that should always come up with your layers menu. If you don't see it, you can go to window and open up channels. But they usually come up as a combined set. If I click over the mask and then click over the selection tool, this red color is just showing you that a mask is there. It's not part of your image. It's just designating that you're choosing a mask to work with. If I click selection, it's just going to pop an automatic selection around the um, object area, just like using, it's just a different way of using that area selection tool in the layers menu. And this can be quicker if you have a detailed image and sometimes more problem free. But now I'll go back to layers and that should still be selected. If I click on the color data for that layer instead of the mask, there it's got a selection. Um, I'm just back out in the regular color data. I can go back up and go to paste into, but first I have to copy something. So I'm going to look for some other content. So I'm going to open up, let's see, this brick wall image. and grab a chunk of it with the square selection tool because I don't want the whole sky and everything in it. Edit, copy. Go back to the portrait and then go to, whoops, paste special and paste into. And that's gonna drop that into that selected area but it's, what's nice about this too is that it's still, it's made another selection with that silhouette, but it's leaving the guy behind it. So if I that um, want to merge those two images together, still I can. But first I'm gonna go up and go to transform and scale and size that up so it kind of fills the image a little better. Okay, and for the mean, time I'm going to turn off the the clock so I can see a little bit better what's going on so I'm deactivating that layer and I'll probably deactivate the hands just to see I'll bring them back in a couple minutes okay so that's how that brick texture looks in the silhouette and I'm going to see what it looks like blended with the layer below it that was the layer with the silhouette with the man in the rain. So just by using some of the blend tools to see how the brick works with that person or that particular scene. And sometimes what I like about layering this way with the modes and, you know, different images um, and silhouettes blending together on different layers is that it suggests content to you. You get kind of ideas for content that you might not have thought of <laughs> or symbol symbolism that, you know, makes itself aware um, to your contents just by going through this process. It can be really fun. And it suggests stories that you might not have thought of. But I kind of like this one where the character looks like a ghostly graffiti on top of the brick. So I'm going to choose that because all that texture is kind of interfering with the outline of the silhouette and it's harder to see as a face. I'm going to try to go and add a, another outer glow to see if that helps. Yeah, so I can see more definition now. Um, and I'm probably gonna change this to a different color to create a different mood. The pink doesn't really seem to work with the guy on the brick. <laughs> maybe try to get a more graphic spread to it because I want it to look more like maybe spray paint. 
And then I also don't like that gradient. I'm gonna add another gradient. I'll leave that there because I might wanna blend it with the other color later with semi-transparency, but I'm gonna click on that purple layer. That's the purple gradient fill. And then just go back to that double um, circle that's black and white and just choose gradient because that's gonna fill the whole screen behind the um, different selected areas with a different gradient. And I'm gonna go for something maybe more orange. So just in that simple way, I mean, adding a few different textures, changing the color so the relationships are different. Um, you can change up the mood of your image pretty quickly from the original image in your second image without having to go back and start from scratch. And then they have unity together um, when you look at them next to one another because you still have those original elements there. So either one of those, I kind of like that with a little bit more of the pink on the top of the head. So I kind of like the way that works. I'm gonna save it at this point just in case something happens. And that's a good habit to get into you know, every 10 minutes or so. It's hard to remember sometimes, but. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and reactivate those hands to see if there's something different that could be done with those. Because now I really don't like the floral in there at all. And um, I don't want that interrupting the person that, I mean, I kind of like it without them there all together. So maybe I'll turn off this one. Oops, and then just connect the two parts of this layer. I always forget to do that, the color data and the mask, so I can move those together. And maybe make that even larger. And then I'm gonna click back over the, um, the mask part of that layer. Yeah, come back. And then go to channels and then select it again. Okay. Then go back to layers, click on the color part of that layer again. And now I'm gonna go up and find something to paste into from it or for it. And maybe I'll just, use, well, now I think I'll get another image. Okay, here's some other sort of interesting, ominous looking medieval bu buildings. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take a chunk of those. Edit, copy. Go back to the portrait and now go back to edit, paste into, under paste special. And then drop that scene into the hand and then go back up to edit transform and scale okay so again it, it's a necessity because this, the two textured areas, the bricks on both the facial portrait and the hand are so close in texture and value and color that it's really blending together a lot more than I want it to, even with the outer glow that's there. So I'm going to first unite these two layers, I mean the, um, the mask and the color data move it over so I don't have that little edge there. And then turn off the layer that's below it. Okay, because I was just getting the outer glow from that one. And now I'm gonna go back up to layer, layer style and outer glow. And then maybe find something that works better with the color that's already in the background. I kind of want it to you know, be a little bit more ominous than the other one, work with this warmer color that's in the brick. 
but still offset the hand so it doesn't look like it's just blending right in with the face. And this is still a little bit too dramatic, so I'm going to change the opacity in the layer style submenu. And then layer style submenu also has different blend modes, just like you have in your layers menu. They're exactly the same. They just are different relationships between the color and the background, the layer below it. Although this one doesn't let you kind of roll over it and preview it, at least not in my system, like the, you can do in the layers. So you just kind of have to click on them to find one that might work better. And that one's almost there. Maybe if I make that more, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Okay, and then while this is locked, I'm just gonna go back up to the move and see if I can place this someplace else so it looks a little better. Okay. And now I'm gonna go back down because I feel like I kind of like the composition and the two different elements, but it needs something to unite the background. So I'm gonna go back and reactivate um, those old clocks. And the way that the color set up with the blend on this, I don't like that a lot. So I'm gonna go back up. This was set on different blend mode, difference. So I'm gonna try some others to see if I can get a better color um, connection. Yeah, that kind of works. And then I, I'm going to make this much more transparent. So it just drops to the background, but isn't just a stark pink. Okay, so I kind of like the way that looks. I'm going to go back to the hand. I'm still not really happy with the way that the hand is blending up here in the thumb area. So there's one more thing I can try without moving it. Um, it's already got the outer glow, so I'm clicking twice over the word effects underneath that layer. And that opens up my layer style, another submenu to the layer styles by clicking over the word effects. That will take me back in if I click over outer glow into the menu where I could change the color of the outer glow that exists there. But I'm going to try to go to this blend grayscale menu to see if I can get a better blend. And that works differently just by dropping out the highlights in the shadows or adding from the top layer some of the background trans through transparency. So you can get some other interesting blend effects with this that look different and sort of more graphic, more textury than the color blends through the layer styles. So I kind of like the hand just blending out like that. So I'm gonna say okay with that. And again, I just clicked over effects, not the layer to get that to pop up. I had to click twice with my computer and then it's at the bottom blend if. Um, you can blend your layer or the underlying layer with the layer. Um, in terms of grayscale to get some different connections between color and pattern and texture. Um, but now I'm gonna go back up directly to the layer style menu with the outer glow and see if something darker might work better. And then I have to put this on normal to be able to see it. Yeah, I like that better. Or I could add a drop shadow to it. That's another thing. So, you know, you just want to play with those effects. I kind of like that this looks like the hand is now kind of being forced through those gear and clock shapes. But now I'm not so happy with the way that the building is positioned. So it's always just going back and forth between these tools and then tweaking the content within the layer mask moving the layer mask and the content itself in terms of the composition, and then working with your layer styles to get offset of color around the masked areas um, to get some definition within your design. So I'm gonna try to go back and maybe move those buildings around now, again, because it's part of a layer, it's flexible, 
but I do have to, in this case, if I want to move the picture within the mask, I have to unclick that chain symbol to unlink them. So I can use the move tool with those linked together to actually move it within the composition. But if I want to move what's in that layer, I have to unclick that chain so I can separate that out. <laughs> anyway, I would go on and mess and mess with this for probably hours, but I'm just going to kind of leave it like this. So you can see some of the building and I wanted to get some of that white back in the wrists. So I'm going to go back up to edit. Whoops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Escape. We'll work with that other, that's Puppet Warp, which we'll be working with, but not right now. So scale. Okay. So I wanted some of the white around here just so the wrist would show and some up here just to hint to the building so that works. And then now just as an example, if I click back between the color data, the mask data and unite them again, if I grab the move tool, now I can move that whole composition around to a different position in space. And if I want to scale them, I can scale them together without just scaling the interior content. Okay. So these can be tricky to work with. Again, it's just something, have fun with it. Come back to the video. I'm going, I'm recording this. So I will, it'll probably take me about an hour to get it online. So you can come and look at the layer stack that I have here and review that part. The trickiest part is kind of, you know, just getting used to adding this lock when you need it to move the layer um, color data and the mass data around for the composition together and then unlocking that when you want to move the content that's within the layer mask separately. So try that a couple of times to get used to that because it's a really powerful tool but it can be frustrating. And then also using the layer styles to add a glow or a drop shadow around your silhouette areas to create offset between the different parts of your composition. Um, so I'm gonna save these two and then we'll look at them together. So I'm going to save as for this one and saving the Photoshop document as a working file, because whenever I look at these the second day, I want to change them again. Um, so I always save one with the layers intact. And then going back to save as a JPEG to save a flattened one that I can post, you know, if I, if for years to go on to Blackboard or to share on social media. And I'm just gonna leave this at 12 maximum quality if I wanted to print it, baseline standard. Okay. And then I'm gonna go back up because I didn't save the other one as a JPEG, um, the portrait three. and save that. Okay, so if I just pull this tab out, I can kind of see what this one looks like next to the other one. So you can see, I mean, this is sort of a direct replication because I took the whole layer stack and went to image, image rotation and flipped it all, um, flipped canvas horizontal for the second image. So it brought the face over, it's just creating a mirror image between the two images. The hands were also mirrored. Um, this guy within the, um, portrait silhouette is mirrored. 
So everything's just a reflection, but then changing the colors, changing the content just a little bit can change the mood. So that's one way you could approach this assignment. If you want, you can create very different compositions, but you still want them to have unity between the two. It's just that idea of creating a set or a series that while they're distinctly separate images, they're still part of a set because they have some elements of unity. And in this case, you know, because it's a direct flip, the mirror symmetry always creates a feeling of unity. And also the backgrounds, even though they have different colors, the pattern is still the same between the two. So there's unity there. There's unity with the two symbols of the man, even though, you know, he's a graffiti in one and standing in the rain in the other. And there's unity between the hands because they're the same hand positioned in the same way, even though it has different fill content. So think about that while you're composing them. It's a challenge to kind of get something that has a different mood with the design choices that you make between color, pattern, texture, um, positioning, and then also having unity where the two feel like they belong together. So is there any questions? And the reason why I gave two um, images in one week is just because you can so quickly, uh, you know, flip over the image or, you know, just work from the original image for the second one and create the second one pretty quickly. But this is to get practice in creating that feeling of unity and separation with two images or a series or a set of images. So when I will post a, um, discussion question by Tuesday about this assignment. And you can just again answer that in the same way, a couple of sentences or a paragraph. And then also you can put your work in progress up. If you have both images done, add both. If you have just one done, you know, add the one. But try to kind of work on them simultaneously. Save them as Photoshop documents both so you can go back and build them. Um, you know, work back from one to another one before they're entirely finished. That can be an interesting process. So put up both if you have them for next week um, for our discussion. And we're going to try to go back on to the, for the next couple of assignments, doing one assignment a week. Um, okay, so any questions? All right, I guess we can quit for today. And you can always email me if anything comes up. And have fun with this. I mean, using those masks can be really fun. And it's an interesting way to create a very graphic looking image from photographic uh, pretty quickly. So that's the goal with this too. And it's just a different feeling and a different look than the other process we used with the gradients and the eraser to merge layers together where you tend to get a much more softer kind of fairy tale looking image to or dreamlike image. This is usually this process is more graphic and sort of um, harder looking in a, you know, not a bad way in a good way. So practice with that feeling too and see what you can come up with, with, you know, simple silhouettes. You don't have to struggle over setting up the perfect shoot because you can get an interesting silhouette as you can see from the two that I had that were just kind of really quickly taken. Um, okay, so I'm gonna stop for now and let me know if you have any questions later on. Again, you can email me and that's it. So. <laughs> Have a good weekend. I enjoyed seeing your work if you shared it. If you haven't shared work yet, try to upload something so we can see it next week. If you feel uncomfortable about sharing work, um, you can always email it to me, although it's really interesting to see it with the class. So either way is fine though. Um, and I will see you next week. I'm gonna stop sharing. And bye, Kaylee. <laughs> see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.